I'm pretty sure you haven't had a lot of representation coming to Hardenburg to be able to talk to you about what's going on in the county. What typically happens is a pretty Kingston-centric environment, mm -hmm. and people anywhere outside of Kingston. And that, mean, that doesn't mean whether it's in Shangam, in the far southern part of our county, or in Sorgenes, or here, or wherever. A lot of people feel disenfranchised, or did for a long time. They felt like everything just kind of focused in Kingston, and everyone forgot that the county is really the size of Rhode Island. The government in Kingston, which was very Kingston-centric, became a situation where if you didn't know somebody there, you didn't get a job there. If you didn't know somebody, it was awfully hard to get into the city county nursing home. If you didn't know somebody, there were real challenges for you, okay? And, and, the, and you didn't get a lot of the services. So that's a real undemocratic way to run a government. In most places, what you see is this. Every 10 years, as the census comes out, whoever is in power at the time they draw these really unusual <laughs> districts up to make sure they stay in power. It's called gerrymandering. They rig the elections. They don't say it that way because it sounds really bad. But that's what they do. They rig the elections. The hard part is both sides of the aisle have been guilty of this around the country. This has happened. Whoever was in power when the census came out, in Ulster County, we were in this change mode of really doing good government and reforming things. And we got this done. We had a panel. I picked in a large group of citizens, just really, and it wasn't me choosing them, we called for people to volunteer. 100 people plus volunteered. Then the majority leader of the legislature picks two people, the minority leader of the legislature picks two people, and those four people then had to pick three more people. Here's the exciting part. Built into this was if they couldn't agree, then those four people got thrown out. <laughs> so it kind of gave a little incentive. So they did pick seven people. They, so they had a seven-person committee go out and do this independent redistricting. I just signed it into law two weeks ago. We're so excited about it. It is historic, not just for Ulster County, but for so many places. People call me from all over New York State saying, how did you do this? How did we accomplish this? And it really came down to this commitment to getting it done. So you're going to vote in November. Hopefully all of you go and vote. But you're going to get to vote for one legislator that you can hold accountable. We took on some things in our highway department. Our highway department had, to put it in context, we had 200 plus people at the, at the high as county, as county employees, many of whom were, had names very similar to legislators. <laughs> <laughs> I know you find that remarkable, that could happen like that. <laughs> so there's a lot of patronage that went on in that department, okay? So we had over 200. To put it in context for you, Dutchess County had 103. Green County had 60. We had over 200. You were paying for all of that. All the salaries, all the health care benefits, all the retirements, all the everything. You were funding the, well, the Kingston centric, I'll take them, 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 and them. But it's not that these folks weren't working hard or not working hard. It's that we could do the job more efficiently and save you taxpayer money. There's no reason you have to fund all this. So we started down a process of saying, we're going to clean our own house up, but I'm also going to reach out to the towns. And I'm going to say, how can we work together? Because no one can believe for one second that the system that we had before with towns and counties and the state, and in some cases we had villages and everybody else, all running their own highway departments to the point where we had towns driving all over the place, over top of county roads to get to town roads. And we've all experienced this. And you may not experience it here because I'm going to tell you some really good things about Ardenburg. There's a lot of places in Ulster County where people would follow the snowplow. It's plowed like heck. And all of a sudden, it just looks to blame them. And it's driving over completely unplowed roads because it quote unquote wasn't their road. Not their road. Like somehow the, this ownership situation was a problem. To me, that is the worst kind of bureaucracy. It's government at its worst. It's not serving you. It's a nightmare. So I called all the town supervisors and I called all the highway superintendents in for the whole county. We sat everybody down and we said, right now, we know we have this big mess. No one would design this mess as the way to plow our road and maintain our road. Nobody would do it. You're all highway experts. I'm not. If this over here is as bad as it is right now, and this over here is perfect, whatever that is, how about we just kind of inch our way closer to this and further away from that? What say? Well, 
I had a little beacon. And the beacon was this. I got the point to Jerry Fairburn, Hardenberg, the highway superintendent here, and the fact that it's happening right here. So because when people would push back and say, this can't be done, I said, it's being done. Terry Fairburn is doing it. They're doing it in Hardenburg, the highway superintendent here in, 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 in Hardenburg are doing it. It's getting done and it's working just fine. So, and I'm gonna pay you to do this. So I'll do the hard stuff. I'm gonna have to get smaller. I can't have 200 plus people there anymore. I'll try to do it through retirement incentives. I'll try to do it through attrition. I'll try to do it, through, but we have to get smaller because we can't afford this anymore. And doing it this way creates a much more streamlined operation for everybody else. And this, I would say our business is to make sure essential services are delivered as efficiently as possible. That's our job. So many governments have gotten away from that. That's our job. Essential services as efficiently as possible. No one argues that the essential services have to be delivered. The question is how do we all work together and get it done? So using Jerry and using Hardenberg as an example, we increased shared services in Ulster County in the first year 600%. Mm -hmm. 600%. We saved $2.2 million, million in the process, first year out. We took on the worst winter in 25 years, mm -hmm. and it all worked. It all worked. Nobody is looking to get out. In fact, the knocks came on the door for those towns that didn't participate. And I've had multiple ones come forward at this point saying, Let's say we opt into this too. This seems like it worked out just for you. Okay, so we're going to see more of that, kind of more of those shared services, more good government. The state, I just met with the lieutenant governor yesterday, so let's see about the kind of conversations we can have about. You want to talk about tax caps now or you want to wait? Tax caps and safety net changes. Good. Please. Good. Want to start? Which one do you want to start with? Don't mm -hmm. care. I will start with tax caps. Okay, state government has decided, because this sounds really politically good for both parties, and the governor really wants this, that they're gonna put a tax cap in, and everyone's gonna jump up and down and say, that's great, we finally got control over property taxes in our community. What they don't say is, they haven't done anything to effectuate the change when it comes to the unfunded and underfunded mandates hitting schools, towns, counties, all nine yards. In fact, there are some counties, we're not one of them, but but it, it illustrates a real point here. There are some counties where their entire tax levy is used to pay their Medicaid bill. And their Medicaid bill escalates at 3% a year by state law. There's a, tax, there's a cap on the rate of increase. But it goes up 3% every year. And it's the whole tax levy, okay? You got that? Now look at this. In that same community, they now have a 2% tax cap. Now, I studied really hard in school, and I'm pretty sure that you can't have a 3% guaranteed increase and a 2% cap if you have no control over any of it because it's all unfunded and all, all mandates. There's a problem with this. But it's very likely it will pass in Albany. And the, the logic that exists in Albany is this. Once we use this blunt instrument of a tax cap, it will force us as the state government to go in and really deliver some mandate relief here to be able to allow this to really be a reality. It's a, it's a pretty big gamble. The gamble with you, me, all of us here. That's the gamble, and that's what they're doing right now. But it's gonna pass, by the way. Because everyone can just run around to their, to their constituents and say, we've got to control our property tax. The question is, if unfunded or underfunded mandates are not addressed, following this, it will have accomplished absolutely nothing. 